this comment is the jump off for my next video. Any of you older ladies remember that song, It's a Thin Line Between Love and Hate. A quiet woman is a ticking time bomb. And then I followed up with the sweetest woman in the world can be the meanest woman in the world if you make her that way. And she regarded me as a youngster, but I do want to remind us all that yes, while the Persuaders put out that song in 1971, H-Town remade it, the same name, A Thin Line Between Love and Hate, in 1996 for a movie of the same name. So let's get into this psychological and sociological study of what it means to F around and find out. The daddies and the granddaddies should have hit the young men on to that when women go quiet, that's a dangerous time because she could still be smiling and be plotting. And this song highlights that. He says, it's five o'clock in the morning, I'm just getting in. So he knows he's out of pocket. Coming home at five o'clock in the morning is out of pocket. And when she opens the door, she's not fussing because why? They both know he's out of pocket. She says, are you hungry? Did you eat yet? Now, if you know you're out of pocket, do you really want to eat what a woman is making for you? All the while she's smiling, she doesn't raise her voice, and it's five o'clock in the morning. This is not making warning signs go off in your head. Now, he says, don't think you can keep breaking your woman's heart. He puts this warning out. It's like, because it's a thin line between love and hate, once you cross over that line, there's not going to be a whole lot of coming back. Because in a little bit, she's going to break and then <laughs> you're, going to be, you're going to be in a world of trouble. So she's out here smiling and she is fooling him. And I'm not sure why outside of men really not understanding what women or how women operate. Now, this is the part. The sweetest woman in the world could be the meanest woman in the world if you make her that way. You keep on hurting her. She keep being quiet. She might be holding something inside that'll really, really hurt you one day. We are not built. We are not all built to accept cheating. Stop thinking that. Yes, yes, we are cold and calculating sometimes. And yes, we can serve up revenge after calculating the cost. <laughs> all right, so in this particular instance, he has been harmed to so much that he has to be bandaged from feet to head. Now, sometimes the damage is not done physically. Sometimes she could just walk away while he is at work. So recognize that sometimes the damage is not always physical. Anyways, I have more for this. You guys jump in the comments in the meanwhile. So the men's were in my comment section just so appalled that a woman could wait until her last child was out of the house and then bounce as well because they do not seem to see that cheating can actually break a relationship. I believe that they really believe that cheating is normal. So this person, Kara L. Amor, yes, I know he's a man because he's sitting up here confused as to... I'm confused as to why she never told him her, her intentions were to stay for the children and leave once they left the house. Why? Why does she need to tell him? Did, did he share his intentions to cheat? Can y'all do a video on the difference between good peace and relationship is over peace? No, no. Kara El Amor, get some sense about yourself. If the relationship issues have not been resolved and a woman and her lifestyle has completely flipped and she's no longer intimate with you and no longer saying I love you understand that the relationship is probably over stop being obtuse moral to the story if your lady is complaining and crying she is happy no if a woman is still telling you and communicating with you what issue she might have she's still checked into the relationship once a woman goes quiet she is calculating and plotting quiet does not mean complacency then Black Acre 1808. I'm not complaining. I'm just pointing out she was vindictive. Revenge is a, um, a dish best served cold. We don't care that you think she's vindictive because at this particular point, once a man is a cheater and has brought another woman into his bed, he, what he gets on the back end is on him. That's the consequences of his action, regardless if she pulled the plug on the relationship then or she pulled the plug in 10 years. He was a slow-burning cancer that caused the issues. 
Um, then he says, it's that she wanted to ensure the money and kept that kept coming in and it's easier raising kids in one household as opposed to two. Yes, men complain about child support and losing everything in divorce. So this should be a win. He didn't have to pay child support. Everything was under one roof. That's a win-win. He saved money as well. This third comment, he was hoping it was going to work out. We don't care about his hopes. We don't care. Sorry. Then he's like, he wasted 10 years. We don't care. Sorry. We don't care. And this man, what she did is literally wasting his time for years and lying. What silence is needed? What silence is needed to be an honest person? And him cheating has nothing to do with this anymore because of how she moved on. We don't care how she moved on. That was her reaction to his first action. People need to stop cheating. Have some integrity and leave when you're not happy. Y'all can read this last comment for yourself, but jump in the comments and tell me what you think. This was the perfect comment, and I will use this for teaching purposes. She says, I did the emotional shutdown years ago when I knew that my life depended on leaving a rich, high-level occultist who was spiritually abusing me. I made him think that I was nesting when I was really divesting all along. I turned into a rack Stepford wife who would get money from him for future trips and massive redecoration projects. I pocketed the money and every day I moved a small laptop roller bag full of stuff to storage every day. I went to my insurance job. Every weekend I bought in secondhand clothes and cheap $10 outfits to make my closet look full. Man, this is a plan for real. The week before I left, I pretended to donate a bunch of stuff to the Salvation Army in garbage bags when really it was just a friend in a Salvation Army truck taking it to storage. I got that last paycheck and packed the roller bag with my jewelry and his little cash safe and flew cross country to Vegas for a new head start. It was like a month before he figured out I'd moved everything out and all that stuff was just a decoy. I also left my cell phone behind in Atlanta before I left my office to catch a plane that day. When leaving an abusive, um, when leaving an abusive a clown you must leave your cell phone behind and buy you a new one before arriving at your new destination so she says you need to be super safe and stealth and have a head start so dump your old phone and job and keep it pushing this was a clinic and i thank this woman for giving us a blueprint ladies take notes and guys, you can take notes as well, but it won't matter because obviously you guys are kind of oblivious to signs and lack the emotional intelligence to see when a woman has changed up and when consequences might be needing actions. Anyways, you guys jump in the comments. If you have any stories to um, share, please share them and like, comment, and share.